I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a sweet little harpsichord. It was built from a Zuckerman harpsichord kit in uh, 1984 by this gentleman, Henry Van Zant Cobb. He actually built uh, a few harpsichords from kits, bigger ones than this even. And this harpsichord is in pretty good shape, but it's been stored and stored down a basement. It's made of maple. It's, it's got dirt on it. It also has what may be a little bit of water spots and possibly mildew. So I'm going to clean it down with a bleach solution and then re -shellac it. I'm going to try to save this clipping. That scotch tape seems like it's stuck on there pretty well. I'm going to see if a little paint thinner will loosen that adhesive. I'll finish getting the tape residue off later. Now I'm going to take off the hardware and take the lid off. All right, now I'm going to wash this. I have a, a gallon of hot water uh, to which I've added an eighth of a cup of TSP and uh, eight ounces of bleach. Well, the bleach solution has dried overnight and everything looks really good, uh, especially some of the spots that didn't seem to go away immediately. And so now I'm going to sand everything with uh, 220 gold paper, getting ready for a coat of shellac. Okay, I'm all ready for the shellac. Uh, I buy this shellac, this wax-free shellac, at the hardware store, and I thin it like two parts shellac and one part alcohol. As I started to brush shellac on this, uh, the outside of the fallboard, I see all these little water spots here. I could see them yesterday when I washed it with bleach. They didn't seem to disappear instantly. But this morning when I came back in, they seemed to be gone. And I sanded this and I couldn't see them. But now I can see them. So I sand this fallboard a lot better till those spots are gone. The sanding wasn't really going so well then. The lack was clogging up, but I decided, well, let me try a scraper. That seems to work a lot better. This is where the spot, the worst spots were in this area here. Okay, so all the shellac has dried overnight. It all looks pretty good. And so now I'm going to uh, sand with 320 gold. I'm going to sand everything and then uh, apply a second coat of shellac. 
Now remember that this fall board is double sided, I'm doing both sides and for the first coat I did one side and flipped it over on a nail board but um, that's only good for the first coat. This coat, the second coat, which will be also be my final coat, I'm going to do you know, each side separately. I'll do this side, the inside, uh, wait till it dries, then turn it over and do the outside. Also, this time before, for the first coat, I used a thinned out coat of shellac. For the second coat, I'm going to use it straight from the can. I'm hoping in this light that maybe you can see how imperfect my first coat is. Uh, it always looks so good going down, but when it dries, I can see my brush strokes and stuff. And then the second coat will always go down a lot better. So I do the flats with the sandpaper, and I'll just do all the turnings with the scotch pad. pad. Okay, so this side of the fall board, I put this coat on about six hours ago. I think I can flip it over now and uh, sand this side. So now I can put the final on this side. Okay, now the second coat has dried overnight, and the next step is to sand it out with uh, 500 gold sandpaper. The shellac coat has, you know, a lot of defects in it, there's a lot of brush marks. Shellac dries so fast, it makes it difficult to brush a really nice coat over a large surface, so hopefully I'll be able to smooth it all out with this 500. And I'm not applying a lot of pressure, just lightly but I can see the brush marks and other defects going right out. So I'm hoping you can see here, as I sand, after the first couple passes of sandpaper, you can see very clearly your, the, the defects, or in other words, where brush marks are. And so I just keep sanding. And now I know it's ready for the next step. Okay, so now I've got this sanded. So I didn't get every single shiny spot out because the next step, which, in which I'll use 4-0 steel wool, will take out those remaining shining spots. And you can see here some of the shiny, grainy marks in, in the shellac. I'm going to take the steel wool and I can see in my raking light here that those shiny spots are disappearing and as they disappear the surface is becoming very very smooth and looks even and is developing a really nice sheen. I do uh, small sections at a time. You go along make sure you get the edge really well and then just do a small section usually dictated just by what's comfortable and then when I move on to the next section when I'm done with that or and as I'm finishing that section I overlap with the section that I've already done. Okay, the next step is to wax it. I've put this buffing pad on my sander. This too I'm going to do section by section. And it's important not to put too much wax on it. You want to put on enough, of course, but it's always a mistake to get too much on it. So the, the case of the harpsichord itself, I'm not going to sand, I'm going to go straight just to steel wool. These sides may or may not have similar defects uh, as the top did, but you just don't see them, especially with this lighter wood, this maple. On the leg assembly, I'm just going to go uh, straight with steel wool and wax. OK, 
Okay, so I want to shine up the brass hinges a bit. I can't tell if they're lacquered or not, so I'll put a little uh, metal cleaner on a section and just see what happens. Oh, this is excellent. Now, before I seat the screws completely, I'll take a little steel wool and take the tarnish off them. And then always make sure that the slots in the screws all end up going in the same direction. So here we go. This nice little harpsichord. If you remember, it had been stored and it was uh, dirty and had mildew. And uh, we, I cleaned it with a bleach solution, shellacked it and waxed it. I think it looks pretty good.